The topic today is diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and stress. What your doctor never told you. There's a substance uh, that German physicians have been using for over 30 years that very few physicians even know about here. Doctors in alternative medicine know about it, but in allopathic and traditional medicine, uh, it's, not, it's not talked about, discussed, and probably I may haven't even heard of it. So I'm going to discuss that during our lecture today, what that substance is. And one of the aspects that will reduce insulin resistance some of the, is a common household item. In fact, a number of the substances are common household items that have been shown in, in rigorous scientific studies to be effective. There are over 40 natural substances that can either help with the diabetes or metabolic syndrome uh, or reduce the complications of diabetes and, and, and the uh, uh, metabolic syndrome. Now, there are also very dangerous foods that are not sweet, very dangerous for a diabetic or somebody with metabolic syndrome or anybody with which has high sugar, very dangerous, but there's no, it doesn't taste sweet. We're gonna discuss what are these dangerous foods. Again, there'd be foods that most doctors never told you about unless they're educated in alternative medicine as well as allopathic medicine. And the other, the fifth aspect that doctors mostly don't go into is the relationship of stress and diabetes. Now we need to keep in mind, we talk about diabetes we have to understand the interrelationship of all the bodily systems. So very often with diabetes, there's cardiovascular disease. Uh, the immune system is also compromised. We're prone to various illnesses. There's an accelerated aging that happens from the uh, free radicals created. And more prone towards cancers. And I should mention, by the way, that metformin which is uh, one of the medicines used in allopathic medicine, not only helps reduce insulin resistance and the number of insulin receptors, but helps prevent pancreatic cancer. So that's a plus for the allopathic side. But, but there's so many pluses for the alternative situations that we're gonna go into. So we need to understand the interrelationship. Many people with diabetes will have high cholesterol, high triglycerides, and they'll have abdominal fat, uh, uh, fat cells really develop around the abdominal area, which is the dangerous area. Particularly for a man, if the waist reaches 40 inches, that's a real danger sign. Because the fat cells are extremely dangerous. They release fatty acids and produce certain types of proteins that actually uh, raise insulin resistance. So we're gonna go into what the dynamics of that, what that is. But we need to keep in mind the interdependence of all the bodily systems. It's known that most people don't die of diabetes, they die of a complication, typically a heart attack or stroke. That's another illustration of the interdependence. Now we're gonna talk about stress, and my background as a psychologist is in the area of the mind and thoughts and stress and so forth, so this area I have more expertise. Now when we look at causes of stress, we need to understand that a diagnosis itself can cause stress person says, well, you have cancer, or you have cardiovascular disease, or you have diabetes. The diagnosis itself, a person says, well, I'm, I'm a diabetic. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I'm, once a person starts labeling himself, it's, that, can, that can produce stress. Of course, life in itself will deal with stresses in terms of relationships, marriage, finances, the injustices, such as injustices in the workplace, and just the injustices that go on throughout the world. There are many forms of stressors that deleteriously affect our immune system, weaken the immune system, but also are very damaging in terms of diabetes. How does it do that? Well, stress will lead to an increased production of adrenaline. And adrenaline will break down the glycogen. Glycogen is stored sugars in the muscles and in the liver. It'll break down the glycogen into glucose which is the blood sugar. And keep in mind when the blood sugar goes up too high and if there's insulin resistance and it's not getting into the blood cells rapidly enough, you get high blood sugar, 